Hello, Julius. How are you doing? Hi, Rob. I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Uh, welcome everyone to another. Oh, Ron, sorry. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, welcome everyone to another exciting uh, Shark Talk um, offered by Sharks for Kids. Um, we've still got a few people joining, um, so we'll give them a minute or so, and then we'll kick things off. Um, so, how uh, how's your summer been? Have you been keeping busy in these uh, crazy times? Yeah, well, the world turned upside down, but um, I've been keeping busy, and I mean, I work from home anyway, so that really helps me a lot. Uh, right. For me, I guess the biggest challenge is getting outside, because <laughs> normally I'm, I'm so busy indoors, um, but uh, I've, I've still kept busy, which is good. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of uh, fun projects that I'm working on, so I've actually had to take on some greater number of smaller projects because of the way that you know, the economy has changed in terms yeah, of yes. museums and so on. And so I know museums are doing not so well in many cases. So people need to support their museums as much Absolutely. as they can. Um, but um, I actually I, did a, uh, a virtual art exhibit of my photography with our local museum and uh, it was wow. well attended and I showed a, a lot of my underwater photography. So that's one way to help out in these times. Hopefully you're working on some cool projects like this one. For those of you that don't know, uh, Julius actually created the dinosaur T-Rex stamps here in the United States. So if you have a chance, pick those up. It's hard to tell from the picture, but they're actually three-dimensional. So as you turn it, one of them changes. It's really, really cool. He does some neat stuff like that. So we're all excited to see what other projects you've been working on. Um, for those of you not familiar with Sharks for Kids, uh, we're a group of uh, volunteer shark advocates and we work with schools and kids, uh, teaching them about the important role that sharks play uh, in our oceans and in the world and ways that you can get involved to help save sharks and conserve them for future generations in healthy oceans. Um, so this summer I've been, uh, like you, trying to stay busy, uh, been doing some uh, hiking and biking, been doing a lot of reading. I've been reading up on some of my favorite topics, uh, oh, been yes. reading about Norman, uh, the nurse shark. If you haven't uh, read this one, this is a good one that's available uh, on the Sharks for Kids website, and I'll uh, show the website at the end of today's. And then this is the latest one by Jillian and Duncan, and this talks about shark superpowers. And I learned several really cool facts about sharks and some of the special uh, superpowers they have, like glowing in the dark. Um, so it's, it's a really, really cool, cool read. Um, and uh, I've also taken advantage of these webinars to learn how to draw sharks. So on one of the previous ones, I learned how to draw a basking shark with your help. So Great work. maybe nice. some of you uh, on today were part of that one or uh, the uh, hammerhead one was a lot of fun. I've, I've participated in several of them. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, get started with today's shark drawing. Uh, so what do you have in store for us? You always have some cool Ooh. sharks to draw. What, what should we draw today? Yeah, we've got, um, looks like I'm, I'm sort of on a, on, on a roll of, of unusual sharks in some ways. Uh, we had uh, sharks with weird proportions in the last while. Uh, the last one we did was the, um, the angel shark, so it was a very flat shark. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then we, we also did the winghead shark with the, the longest uh, cephalofoil of any, any shark, um, the hammerhead. Uh, and today we're going to do another shark with strange proportions. Uh, and this one has a ridiculously long tail. Uh, so, and also a very large eye. So it's all out strange. Uh, this is going to be the big eye thresher shark, Alopius oh, superfluosus. So... For those who like thresher sharks, today's the day to learn how to draw one of these. And they're actually um, fun and interesting. Um, they are a bit of a challenge to draw in some ways. So we're going to do some of the, we're going to make an interesting kind of an angle for this. Um, and it should be actually fun because um, I like to throw things around so that we don't have like just the sort of a side view of the shark, but also something that maybe is a little bit more interesting. Uh, more dynamic, and so that's what we're going to do today with the thresher shark, with the big eye thresher. Uh, it's going to be sort of coming at us a little bit, and so, you know, it's going to be a little bit more interesting, and it'll also highlight some of the neat features, like on the head, the really great big eyes, and, um, and you know, thresher sharks have a, a special 
mouth as well that's often very memeable. So what do you recommend uh, that uh, everyone have? Some paper, right. pencils, what do you recommend? Yes, good question, Ron. Um, so I'm gonna be using a, a digital drawing tablet, but uh, you can do this with totally regular paper pens. Uh, I've set up my uh, workstation to mimic an eight and a half by 11 inch page. So that's best, but it doesn't matter what size or shape you want, just that works. Paper, pencil, um, I would recommend having either two colors or uh, a light pencil and a dark pencil or a pencil and a pen because we're going to do some sort of guide shapes first, things that you want to be able to erase a little bit. Mm. And so if you have the ability to put the first ones in either lighter pencil or, or pencil and then pen afterwards, that'll help. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to uh, turn things over to you now and, and let you share your screen and get us started. And uh, Sounds great. if anyone does have any questions, um, there is a Q&A uh, little icon at the bottom of your, your screen. So you can click on that and uh, enter a question. Maybe it's a question uh, about, uh, you know, a technique that he's using or about the shark itself. I know he's going to tell us all about the thresher shark. Uh, which is one of my favorite sharks that I've uh, been able to swim with over the years. So uh, I'm excited and uh, let's go ahead and get started. And, and Ron, if you, um, since you've actually swum with these and I'm really jealous about that, um, if you at any time during the, um, the drawing, you want to interject and add some anecdotes and stuff, I'd be really happy for that. I Just, will. Uh, I'll, I'll Jump in anytime because I'm, I'm eager to learn about it from somebody who's had the chance to see these uh, up close and personal. Well, great. So while you're drawing, I'll uh, add, add some uh, color commentary. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Okay. Things are um, let's get drawing. So I'm going to sh uh, share my screen now and uh, we'll get going with this. So here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a red color for, to kind of distinguish from black the, the first uh, kind of pencil that I've been suggesting, the one that you want to be able to erase if you can. Um, so for that one, you know, use your pencil and then use the pen. I'm going to do the pen equivalent in black afterwards just to make it clear. Okay, so red is going to be stuff that we'll want to be able to erase out, and then black is the final details. So thresher sharks are, are really fun sharks because they've got this really long tail. Uh, and it is, depending on the species, there are three species in the genus Elopius. Uh, and they can have a tail that is just about as long as their, the rest of their body or even a little bit longer. And uh, the big eye thresher shark, which is what we're going to be doing today, um, is actually one that has relatively the shortest tail among the group, but that's not really saying too much anyway because the tail is still really long. And the interesting thing about these tails is that they use them. Uh, it's, it's not there just as a as, as chance. They actually use them to stun fish. And so you may have seen a video of them. Uh, I've seen a video of a pelagic fisher shark that has been whipping its tail around to the front. They're very muscular and slapping fish to stun them so that it can uh, eat them easily. So really neat little sharks, big sharks, actually. They grow up to about, I think, six meters or 20 feet long, but really beautiful. Okay, so let's get going on this one. So I'm going to start to draw, and then you just follow along. And um, some of these shapes are not going to look obvious at first, but just bear with me. The first thing we're going to do, actually, is create... Um, over a pretty large proportion of this page, you want to make a great big figure eight on its side or an infinity symbol. And it'll look like this. Start like this. I'm going to start in the middle. It doesn't matter where you start, but the main thing is you want to mostly, mostly fill out the page. Not quite, but mostly. So imagine a, a figure eight. Whoops. I'm kind of. <laughs> I'm going to. I can erase some, and if you get something wrong, just you know, feel free to erase it part of the way out. You know, and that's okay. 
this is just a matter of, of, of kind of working at it not as one, not as a final thing. You kind of work at it and sketch if you need to. That's okay. I erase a lot when I work. So there we go. So that's the shape that we want first. And I know this doesn't look a lot like a shark, but trust me, it's going to start to look more like one once we get some of the details in. There we go. So that's our first uh, step. There's a reason for this. I mentioned that uh, we want to make this shark look a little bit more dynamic, like it's sort of coming toward us a little bit, not just from the sign. And that's part of the reason why we've started with this shape. So I want you to also now put a dot in the center of the right half of that eight. So like this, right in the middle, if you can get it as much in the middle as, as, as possible. That's going to help us to um, figure out where to put some of these shapes. Now we're going to make a kind of an arch shape starting from that center point. This is actually going to be part of the shark's snout and, and, and his gill area. So you go like this. You start at that center point. And you go upward in the, sort of the one o'clock direction if this was a clock. Go out and it starts to curve a bit. And you go past the edge of that that uh, eight shape, then you curve back like this. This is where the arch happens. Go back and intersect that line and then come in a little bit like that. Not quite as far as the middle of the eight. I kind of, I kind of didn't make a very nice line out there. So I'm just going to fix that all, but I want it to be a bit of a smoother curve. See, I'm not, I'm not doing this well either. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, roughly like that. The reason I wanted to get that kind of nice and smooth is because that is the, the front end of the shark. It's snout. The nice thing about this angle is that we get to see the snout a little bit from below as well. So you get to see the way that it's kind of pointy. And the big eye thresher shark among the three species has a, a, a relatively pointy snout and has maybe the longest snout of, of, of all the threshers relative to its, its uh, the shape of the rest of it. Okay, so that's kind of the front end of the shark. Now we're gonna add what's going to become the belly. So starting again at that center point that you made in the middle of that right side of the eight, go downward and to the right, in the same way as that line was up into the, sort of down into the left, the same way as it was up into the right, and then we're gonna go past that line again, the, the figure eight. We're going to just slightly curve in a little bit toward the other one and then slightly curve back so that you have a, a line that has a bit of a, a dog leg in it or kind of a, it changes direction twice like that, just a little bit. Okay. And the next stage, we're going to connect the end of this line with the uh, the figure eight on the left side in such a way that it kind of tapers or, or the, the space between them gets gradually narrower. It's going to work like this. Start at the point where you left off and you curve upward and get closer and closer and closer to that figure eight. Oops. I accidentally touched a piece of the screen. Get closer to there and then up about here just past the nine o'clock or ten o'clock point you join with it like that oops now my computer made an extra line maybe we don't need that extra line i'm just going to erase that bit out okay, so now we have um this line that joins with the figure eight and this is going to be a uh, part of the shark's tail and the reason why we made this figure eight shape is because we want to show this tail kind of bending around to say slap a fish maybe, or, or a squid. It eats also cephalopods like squid. Um, and uh, this is kind of a more dynamic way to show it. So we want to finish the tail now. And so we want to put the tip of the tail on there. So go to the very top of that left side of the figure eight, and then start from the, from the top from about the 12 o'clock position and go out a little bit like this to the right, and then hook back 
make a little notch down from it like that, and then continue closer and closer to that figure eight edge toward where the other line that you just drew met it, but go a little past to meet the figure eight, like that. So what's happening here is that the tail is bent around forward and we're seeing at the very bottom of the drawing we're seeing the right side of the tail but at the very top of the drawing we're seeing the left side of the tail so it has curved around um, toward us and that point where there's that the, the figure eight line that goes through the tail that's where the very bottom edge sort of the blade lower blade of the tail passes right in front of us and crosses um, and, and we're going to have to erase out part of that when we put in the detail, but because the line that, that crosses in front of us will go in the opposite direction. And actually, if you want, we can just do that now. So if you go to that point where you just drew it, that um, tip of the tail, continue from there and just draw a little line like this that connects uh, the, the, the bottom of the tail that's at the tip with the bottom of the tail that's that's leading out from the shark's body. And that's the actual bottom edge of the tail. So it's it's a complex shape. It kind of curved out um, and, and is kind of facing us. And you see that little notch that we drew at the tip of the tail? That's a subterminal tip is what it's called. That is uh, a feature that a lot of shark tails have at the very top of their upper lobe. It's kind of a flap of tissue that um, comes out and if I'm not mistaken, I think it has hydrodynamic functions. In other words, it helps the shark um, to swim through the water more efficiently. Uh, and I think it would have to do with uh, reducing the amount of turbulence that is produced by the tail. But I'd have to check on that. But a lot of sharks have this. So it still doesn't look much like a shark, but we're going to add details to it. We're going to start with the mouth. Now, remember, you've probably seen... Uh, these memes of, of thresher sharks kind of with the gasp face like uh, because sharks have thresher sharks have this wonderful little mouth they have a very small mouth for a shark relatively and when they open it um, and you know they look at you with their eye they have this very worried concerned expression on their face and we're gonna see a little bit of that happening here but big eye thresher sharks have a couple of things happening they're actually got the widest mouth of all the threshers. So we're not going to see it to the same extent as, say, a common thresher shark. But we're going to make um, a, an arched line starting just above the center of that right side. Whoops, <laughs> I'm drawing here meanwhile. Uh, the right side of the figure eight. And we're going to curve around up and to the left like this. Start just above that center and make a little arch shape like this. Okay, right now he looks like he's kind of sad or angry because it looks like a frown, but we're going to change that a little bit. Um, that's the upper, the front part of the mouth, the upper lips, you could say, I guess, the top of the jaw. Now we're going to add the lower one. Uh, this mouth is going to be a little bit open, so you, you can see inside a little bit. And we're going to make a mostly straight line that goes from the left side here to the right side here, and just a little bit of a notch. So you can actually um, erase out a tiny bit of the arch on the right side there so that it looks like the lower jaw is just a little bit in front. So its mouth is open a little bit, and that's not surprising. A lot of sharks have their mouth open while they're swimming because that's where the water goes in that has to then pass over the gills or out through the gill slits because the, um, the gills, the gill filaments inside of the just inside the gill slits are what uh, filter oxygen from the water. So you need that water to be passing over the gills constantly. So when sharks are swimming, mostly you'll see their mouth just a little bit open. And that's why. It's not because they're trying to show off their teeth or anything like that. It's because they need that to breathe. Um, okay, so that's the, the mouth. Now, we're going to do the eye next. And this is one of my favorite parts of this shark because the big eye thresher shark, as its name suggests, and as a specific epithet, or the species name suggests, superciliosis, um, it has a really big eye. And it's not just big, but it's interesting because it's very long. It's very tall. It's a very strange shape. It's an oval. Now, from this angle, because the shark is coming at us a little bit, it's also 
kind of bending around the, the head. So it, it's weird. It's, it's long, but because it's so long, it kind of follows the contour of the head, which is kind of rounding cross-section. And so the eye kind of bends around. So what we get as a result is something a little bit like a tear shape. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, go to the, there it is. we're going to go to the point where the snout line joins or crosses that, that figure eight on the right side and go just a little bit below that. And we're going to start to make a teardrop shape from there, a little bit of a teardrop. It's sort of like a halfway between an oval and a teardrop like this. You see how kind of it's, an, it's a bent oval, I guess, sort of thing. Because it's curved around the head, but it's a tall eye. It's the strangest, one of the strangest eyes of all sharks. And of course, you've also got the, um, the iris shows up differently. So you've got a little bit of a, a line here as well. And so that's what the eye basically looks like. Really tall. Neatest thing. Almost like a cartoon, really. <laughs> uh, next, we want to add the gills. Now, here's the thing. The other, one of the really neat things about the big eye thresher shark compared to the other threshers, and this is one of the easiest features to help you to distinguish the big eye thresher from the other two threshers, aside from the size of the eye, is this feature here. You notice where we drew the, the snout arch and how it, when it crossed the figure eight, it kind of went in a little bit um, and it um, ended up right here, I'm just making a little X. You don't have to do the X, but right there, I'm going to erase it out. The reason for that is that this line um, on the inside of this figure eight represents a deep groove along the sort of the upper side of the head. Uh, and it ends just in front of the gills. And that will help us to position the gills. So when you look at one of these sharks from the side, you see this really sharp groove that happens coming from just above the eyes back toward the gills. And it's really easy to tell this shark apart from the others because of that. Okay, so that's a bit of trivia for, for if you're looking at a video of a thresher shark, you can tell whether it's a big eye thresher or not just from above really easily. So here's where the gills will go. They'll go right after, just after and below this, the tip of that line. You'll start right here at the left side of that right, of the right side of the figure eight, and you'll make a, a sort of a curved line like this, but that size. And then we want five of them, right? Because sharks have typically, usually five gill slits. There are a few species with six gill slits, and there are a couple of species with seven gill slits among sharks. But the big eye thresher and most sharks have five. So we'll make the last one, and I like to do them this way because it helps you to determine how long you want the space between them. So that was the first one. The last gill slit will be here. And notice that the last one is also a little bit at an angle compared to the first one. And it's shorter. And then you can put the ones in between, sort of halfway in between. And then the, the, one, the second one is between the first and the third. And then the, the fourth gill slit is the one between the third and the fifth. But that one, um, you want the bottom of it to just about meet that fifth one. Because the fifth one um, curves in uh, a bit and, and kind of gets close to the bottom of the fourth one. Another bit of uh, fun feature of the, of the thresher sharks, uh, the big eye threshers specifically. And a lot of sharks actually have this too. So we can add now the nostrils. So we're getting the face finished up here. The nostrils are positioned just a little bit um, shy of halfway from the tip of the mouth to the, to the tip of the snout. And it's, um, there's a, a neat feature hap that happens here that'll help us to draw it. Uh, you start here about midway between the, the front of the eye and where the snout line joins that figure eight. And you go down a little bit and then up and a loop. It's kind of like a V with a loop on the left side. The reason for that is that this V shape is actually a, what's called a nasal flap. It's a bit of tissue that hangs down in front of and inside on the inner side of the nostrils. Um, and some sharks have this flap really lengthened into barbells, like the, um, the um, mandarin dogfish is a good example. And they actually use these as like whiskers, just like cats use whiskers to feel around. 
um, for prey and on the bottom of the ocean, for example. Now, thresher sharks don't use it for that. That's the right uh, nostril, the left one, the shark's left nostril is on our right side because it's facing us. And you can basically only see that nasal flap because it's sort of covering the nostril behind it. Like that. It's kind of a V shape as well. It's a, it's a small little V. It's not big because these sharks don't use that nasal flap for, for feeling like other sharks, some other sharks. We can add the teeth, and they're very tiny. Thresher sharks don't have big teeth. To humans, threshers are basically harmless. They hunt fish anyway, so they wouldn't even attack you. Um, and so sometimes if you see people um, you know, expressing anger for thresher sharks, it's very unfounded. <laughs> There's no reason to. Um, but big eye thresher sharks have relatively long teeth among the threshers, um, like long and skinny. So if you were to look at it, if, uh, if you had found a, teeth, a tooth on the, on the seashore, which you can often find with shark's teeth, it'll look something like this. And about like that, and there's the root of the tooth. So big eye threshers have this relatively narrow tooth on the top, like that. But if it's in the shark's mouth, you can only see the tip of it because there's a lot of soft tissue on the outside that covers up the teeth. And so they'll look sort of like this. Tiny, tiny, tiny little, little tips. Maybe about nine on one side on the top. But some of them are hidden inside of the jaw. And then um, on the bottom, you also see very, very tiny little teeth. Just the tips are visible. You can see they're just really, really small. You, you can't do much with them to anything that's large. They're great for grasping fish. You know, these long, sharp um, teeth are really good for grabbing fish. But they're also stunned, right, the fish uh, often. So then it doesn't have to work too hard on them, which is helpful. Okay, so um, now we want to give this shark fins because it's looking kind of helpless there right now without the fins to help it swim. Uh, so let's start with the pectoral fins. Those are the big fins that are the equivalent of our arms. They're the big ones on the front, paired fins. We're going to start with the shark's left pectoral fin, which is on our right side because it's facing us. So you start on the body just below that midpoint of that figure eight on the right side, and you go outward into a long fin. Now, thresher sharks have long pectoral fins. It arcs back like this. But big eye threshers have, I think, the longest fins, um, pectoral fins of them all. And then it arcs back like this a bit. Okay, so the reason it looks like this partly is because it's kind of facing us. I'm going to, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to draw a, a view from the side of that fin right here in, in between its tail. If, it, if you were looking at it right from the side, it would look like this. Oops, oh, sorry. Like that. Mostly like that. So it's still very long, very quite narrow, and it has a relatively sharp tip, a little bit longer than that. Relatively sharp tip, and, and more so than other thresher sharks. Um, and, and they're really impressive looking fins. There are very few sharks that have as long a pectoral fin as do the threshers. There are a few that have really long ones. Um, the long fin mako is a wonderful example of a similar one that way. But these ones have extremely long pectoral fins. Beautiful sharks, like wings. In, that's and a good analogy. Uh, the wings, um, when we were diving with them, and they are very hard to locate. There's really only a few places in the world that you can find these sharks. And I was in a place called Malapascua, Philippines. And you have to get up uh, at you know, first thing in the morning before the sun's come up and go down fairly deep and just hang out and hope you get to see them. But one of the things I remember besides that big long tail fin that takes up, you know, about half their body is these very long, like you said, wings uh, that they have for pectoral fins. And what that allows them to do is the tail fin can generate a lot of bursts of speed and propel it very, very fast, but those pectoral fins, they can turn on a dime. So if they get spooked sometimes by our bubbles when we're scuba diving, even something like that could spook them, and they, in a split second, they could turn 180 degrees and swim away very, very fast. So you have to be very, very calm. Um, so these sharks, they're a lot more scared of us than uh, we were of them. So I, those fins uh, really make this unique. And 
before you said uh, this looked like a cartoon. Out of all the sharks, I always thought this was the, the funniest cartoon sharks. The blue sharks <laughs> are also sort of cartoonish, but these sharks uh, look like someone has over-exaggerated their features, especially the big eye. No doubt, yeah. The, the big eye, the long tail, the long pectoral fins, it's like that that's sort of the awkward teenage stage of a shark, in a sense, if you wanted to cartoonize that. <laughs> uh, or like you know, the big paws of, of puppies. Uh, but they, they keep this when they're growing up. Yeah, that's really cool, Ron. When you swam with them, did, what kind of threshers did you encounter in Malapasqua? You know, I, I'm i not certain, um, but I'm thinking they might have been the common threshers. Okay. This was about 10 years ago when I swam <laughs> with them. And uh, shame on me, I didn't know as much about the thresher shark as I, as you know, the different types of threshers. But I believe it was the common thresher nice, shark. Nice, nice, nice. Which gets Those a are... little bit bigger. I think they can get as long as 20 feet. And these are maybe get as long as 15 feet. Right, right. They're the um, bigger ones. But their eye of these is really, really big. And, and uh, when I went with them, I, I, w I, I was not taking photos or videos. So I don't have anything to uh, recollect and look back. But... Yeah, right. But the experience must be spectacular. Oh, the memories. I'll yeah. never forget it. Wow. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, I'm envious of you for that. I'd love to be able to do that. And um, it's good you mentioned Malapasqua Island. Um, this is one thing that I encountered when I was researching this species. I didn't know this, but and I knew this about some sharks, but I didn't know that both pelagic threshers and big eye threshers, at least, I don't know about the common, but those two both visit cleaning stations at Malapasqua Island. Um, they are... Just like manta rays and a lot of other fish, there's this really neat mutualism that takes place. A mutualism is um, an interaction between two species where they both gain a, a net benefit. And so you have these fish called cleaner wrasse, which are very beautiful. I've seen them underwater and when snorkeling, they're uh, beautiful blue stripes on them. And they, they're very highly visible. And this helps fish to locate them because these cleaning wrasse make these stations at coral outcrops, for example, or like coral heads. And uh, fish come there, but they just hover and present themselves to the cleaner wrasse. And the cleaner wrasse come there and the fish will allow them to, to pick off parasites uh, and, and dead skin and such from, from the body of the fish. And so they do that because it helps the fish to get a, a healthier situation with less parasites. And the cleaner wrasse get a free meal out of it. And I didn't know this before, but Thresher sharks of these two species, pelagic and big eye, have both been observed to visit cleaning stations like manta rays do at Malapasqua Island, which is really cool. And they just, they just sit there as well, waiting for the cleaner wrasse to clean off their outside and then move on. So many species of fish do this, and it's so neat to find this out about thresher sharks too. Yep, that's, that's exactly where we were, about 90 feet down, and there was a pinnacle in the middle of the ocean, and we were hanging out, uh, being as calm and quiet as we could, and waiting for the thresher sharks, and, and I think it maybe it was the pelagic um, thresher then, uh, but it, it would come up and uh, come by the cleaning station and sort of hover slowly, uh, not standing still, but just allow things to come in. And because yeah. the current sweeps down the pinnacle, it sort of rides the current like a surfer would ride a wave wow. and nice. uh, almost motionless and, you know, <laughs> uh, with its tail, just keeping it in position, advancing a little bit. But it was pretty amazing to, to see these that's, sharks get clean. That's cool. And, uh, and it wouldn't need to do much with its tail because of no. the amount of surface area on that. And they're so muscular, right? Those tails. Yeah, yes. Huge tail stock. And you can see where we drew it here, the base of the tail is thicker than for most sharks because threshers have this amazingly thick tail. And it makes sense when you think about it for how they use it to slap fish. They need a lot of power to whip that amount of flesh forward. Yeah, they can actually hit a fish so hard it can cut them in half. So sometimes, wow. like, like you and I, where we cut our food up, sometimes <laughs> they, they prefer to cut their food up as That's well. Funny. Eat well, it makes it a lot easier to catch after that too. Yeah. It, you know, they can also use that tail. These are one of the sh few sharks that you see breaching frequently because that tail can generate so much power and propel the shark completely out of the water like a dolphin. You've, you've all probably seen dolphins. Well, this shark has been seen doing that as well. 
it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive. amazing. I've seen photos of that, but it's, it's impressive how much they can get. They can get some serious airtime. That's right. And so you can actually, if you do this drawing, you can, you could either pretend that the shark is using his tail to slap a fish, or you could pretend that, uh, you know, have the scene with the shark jumping out of the water and you're looking sort of down at it uh, toward the surface of the water as it's leapt clear of the water breaching and is, is about to fall back into the water. So it's kind of up to you how you want to set up the scene. So now we have some, so thank you, Ron. That was some really, really fun commentary about uh, a personal experience with thresher sharks. And I really value that. Uh, when we can hear from people who've actually experienced uh, swimming with uh, sharks, or thresher sharks, to swim with them. That's amazing. So we have now one of those wonderful wing-like pectoral fins. Now the other one, and the reason why it's narrower than that side view I drew is because, again, it's sort of facing us. So if you look at your hand and you look at it a little bit edge on, that's kind of what we're seeing. It's kind of turned toward us, and it's narrow, right? We're thin. So the, the other... Uh, fin of that set because it's a pair uh, happens right it starts right at the sort of lower corner of the gills at the back end of the gills and it comes like this it comes out word oops and a little bit downward kind of a little bit downward now keep in mind that these these fins not only look like but are very much used like wings too and as Ron was explaining they're very effective for steering the shark. So they generate lift, um, kind of like the wings of an airplane. So in that sense, they're very much analogous to wings. Um, and, in, and because the shark can rotate these a little bit, it can use them um, like rudders kind of to steer. Uh, and so that's what's happening. That, that's how they can change direction so quickly. They have a large surface area and they're muscular. And so that's the two pectoral fins of the shark. And again, they're kind of facing us a little edge on. The little dotted line I drew on the other one, and you can kind of draw a similar one, um, refers to sort of the front edge of the fin, which is kind of a blade-like almost. Not quite, but close. Um, and so that just signifies that. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the first dorsal fin. Now, remember sharks have those two fins on top called the dorsal fins? Uh, some sharks have one, very few sharks have one dorsal fin. Most of them have two. This one has two. The first dorsal fin is the bigger one. And it's not very large in this species uh, compared to especially the pectoral fins. But we're gonna start at very near the, the point where those two halves of the figure eight join, just a little bit above that. And you're gonna go up and toward the left side of the figure eight and join it like this, a little bit of a slightly curved line. And then from that tip, go down and there's a very slight curvature as well in the opposite direction, and then a very slight change in curvature back. So if you look at it from the side, again, next to the side view of the fin up here, I'm going to draw it. It looks like this, and then it has a tiny bit of a curvature, and then it joins the, best, the rest of it down like that. It has a bit of a notch at the end, uh, at the top of the body. And then we're looking at it more from the, a little bit from the front on the shark, so you're seeing it a bit narrower. Um, and among the threshers, this one also has uh, a fin that has a bit more of a, a, of a curvature on the back end. It's sort of, sort of slightly curves forward um, or slightly convex, I guess you'd want to call it, kind of like a lens. Um, and not a very, very sharp tip, a little bit of a rounded tip, very slightly. So a bit of a trivia about uh, telling threshers apart as well. Also, this has the furthest back dorsal fin, first dorsal fin of all the threshers. It's also easier to recognize it because it's very close. It starts just over the front of the pelvic fins. And that's what we're going to do next, the pelvic fins. And those are the paired fins that happen after the paired pectoral fins. They're the equivalent of our legs, uh, evolutionarily speaking. When fish moved on to land, our ancestors, these are the pair of fins that ultimately evolved into legs, um, our legs or hind legs of four-legged animals. So we're gonna start with the left, the shark's left pelvic fin, which is on our right side of the body. And it happens here just below where the right side of the figure eight joins the body of the shark, okay? So it's like this. So you come out from there and these have large pelvic fins. That's the other neat thing about thresher sharks and especially big eye threshers. These guys have exaggerated features of all sorts. They have very large pelvic fin for sharks. 
Most sharks have considerably smaller compared to the rest of their body. A few sharks have long pelvic fins, as in like long uh, as in where they join the body. But thresher sharks have a pelvic fin that is uh, that extends far out from the body. And then there's they're paired, right? So there's a, a right one as well on our left side. And think of it this way: the pelvic fins, the front edge starts at at the bottom of the body, the two sides of the bottom of the body, but at the back end, the tips of the pelvic fins just about join. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, this is gonna be very much edge on too. So this is gonna not be much more than a very narrow blade. We're gonna start at the back end, very much where we ended the last pelvic fin. And we're gonna basically continue that line out to the left and downward like this. And then very sharply turn back up to the right like this. And then we'll stop here because that's, where the front edge of that pelvic fin is, and it's separated quite a bit from the front edge of the one on the right side of the, well, the shark's left side. There's also a little bit of a line here, the bottom edge, because these pelvic fins, if you look at them straight, straight from the bottom, you're just looking at the belly of the shark, they look kind of like this. There's one, and then there's the other one. We're looking at it like we're just looking at the belly of the shark. And oops, sorry, I kind of messed up there. These two back ends kind of slant backward. So it goes like this. Okay. So yeah, so there's a part here where it joins the body, where it's connected to the body. And then there's a bit of a longer flap at the back that is free of the body. And then the body, if you were looking at it, would be like this. So looking at the belly of the shark, that's what the pelvic fins would basically look like from below. And so we're looking at it from the edge, so a little bit different. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move that little drawing. I'm not gonna erase it because it might be useful for us for later, but I'm just gonna move it over because it turns out it's a little bit more in the way of the tail that I'm gonna put it now. Let me just put it to the side here like that. Okay, so now, that's fine. Now we're going to do the second dorsal fin. So there's that other fin on the back of the shark. And this is an example of a situation where this shark has a really tiny, tiny, tiny second dorsal fin, almost invisible. It's incredibly small. Uh, and it happens just below the lower edge of that held, uh, the pectoral fin we drew. So it goes like this, it comes out of the body. Oops, not like that line, it was a stray line. It comes out like this, tiny little notch like that. They're not really using that for much. Most of what's happening um, back there is there's a really thick uh, tail stalk, the base of the tail, the peduncle, where the body joins the tail. It's really muscular. These sharks use their tail a lot, and so that area becomes very muscular. And those little fins there are not very much used for steering. The other fin, the last fin of the shark on the body is the anal fin. That's that tiny fin that happens just after the pelvic fins on the bottom of the shark. And again, this is a very tiny anal fin. And it happens right here, almost opposite the second dorsal fin, but a little bit further back from it. So that's another way you can help to recognize it's uh, slightly offset and a little bit back. Uh, it's also very, very small, like that. Now, what we need to do is add a lower lobe to the tail. Right now, what we have is the upper lobe of the tail. Pressure sharks only have a very long upper lobe. And remember that sharks have two lobes of their tail. And normally sharks have a condition called a heterocircle tail, which means that the upper lobe is much longer than the lower lobe. Some sharks don't. Great white sharks are a good example of one where the upper and lower lobe are almost the same length, like a tuna fin. And in fact, that's, that's why functionally. Uh, sharks that need to swim very quickly like mako sharks and great white sharks, have tails that are shaped like a tuna uh, tail because those are the tails that are most effective hydrodynamically. Uh, in other words, to, to generate um, uh, efficient movement underwater for really fast speed. Now, threshers have the opposite situation. They have the most heterocircle tail, the most pronounced long lobe of the upper lobe compared to the lower lobe. But they can still, as Ron was saying, generate really quick bursts of speed because they are so muscular in their tail. Uh, you can get by with, with having a tail that's long like this, like an eel, 
uh, and still move quickly if you have a lot of muscle and can generate a lot of thrust. Most sharks don't have this much muscle in their tails. Um, but so this is the opposite situation of like last week's or the previous week's angel shark, which has a slightly longer lower lobe, you remember. So this is kind of, it shows more of the diversity of sharks. So here we're going to put the lower lobe of the tail of the thresher shark in. And you'll see it's really surprising. It's about the same size. Actually, it's a little bit smaller than the first dorsal fin. So we're going to start here behind the anal fin and make a kind of a, a rounded notch like this. And that's all. It's really quite short. Um, it's not doing a lot. Uh, most of the steering is is accomplished by the big pectoral fins, uh, to some extent stabilization by those big pelvic fins. And, and really the tail is the, is the major driver of, 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 um, of, of power for the shark, the upper lobe of the tail. The lower lobe is relatively less effective this way. It's still useful, uh, and it's uh, basically like the rudder of a ship in some ways to help stabilize it as well. But you can see how thick that stock is um, at the base of the tail. And actually, if you wanted to, we should add a little bit of a, a line here that takes the body and, connect, and and takes it further like this because there's like the, the thickened part that holds the shark's spine is actually um, a little bit thinner than, than that thick, that full thickness that we drew. And you can erase out this line that would join that we had before the body to the base of the tail because there's that sort of a, a narrower part of the tissue of the lower lobe that continues up along the lower edge of the, of the upper lobe. Okay? So there we go. So that there is uh, most of the details. We can add a lateral line as well. And the lateral line is a, it's visible on, on, on sharks as a, a line along the side of the body of the shark. And it is sensitive to vibrations in the water. It's kind of how sharks almost like here, that you have an ear as well on top of their head. Interesting anyway. But these are useful for, for detecting vibrations in the water, also of a very low frequency, so very deep, and even deeper than any of us can talk. Um, really long wavelengths of sound. They're useful for detecting the movement of fish in the water. Anytime a fish does this, flops around in the water, it's generating pressure waves in the water. And those pressure waves can be felt by this lateral line just filled by fluid. So you start here behind that groove um, that comes off the back of the head and you'll just draw a little thin line above the gill slits and it goes behind the pectoral fins, continues behind them along the side of the shark and right into the tail like this. So this is a long line that's filled with fluid and it helps to detect, detect those vibrations that helps the shark to locate where its next meal might be, for example. Uh, and then the last bit, yeah, that's it basically for the details on it. So that's all the guide shapes and stuff. What we can do now is just kind of erase out some of the lines that we need to and add the final little bits of detail. It's hardly much more detail actually, but I'm just going to trace over it with the black pen. So I'm switching to black pen now. And you can um, switch to your pen and trace out the parts that we're just gonna go over. We've done most of it already. So it's really easy at this point. All we have to do is erase out the parts or, or not include the parts that we want erased out from this first bit. Uh, and so I'm just gonna trace over the, the lines that we want to keep with black pen. Like this, so there's that snout that we drew. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this pen thicker so that it's easier for us to see that. Like this. So there's that, uh, the snout that we drew. And we're just gonna trace over that and keep all of that. Yeah, I'm not doing a very good job of making this line nice. <laughs> so there you go. Even even us professional artists um, don't always get it right. I'm used to working on a different kind of a, a tablet, and, and it, it's a little bit weird with this one, so it's harder. Anyway, so we keep those nostrils, those, those wonderful little nasal flaps, and you can fill in the nostril with black. The eye here, again, there's that weird kind of curved oval shape. And then there's that... The, the way where the iris separates basically. And you can actually, you know, make it darker. You can fill it in if you want because they have a pretty dark eye actually. It's a beautiful eye of these guys that I just love them. Well, the other thing that I didn't mention, but this is another thing that helps you to distinguish um, big eye threshers. And it's a wonderful feature. 
If you were to color this in afterwards, color it sort of a purplish gray on top. This is amazing. Very few sharks show a purplish color. But some individuals, a lot of individuals, of big eye thresher sharks have a purplish hue to the top of their body. And it's the neatest color for a shark. Um, so that's something that's really interesting too. And I've seen video and photos of thresher sharks, and this color has been very helpful in identifying the big eye thresher and separating it from the others. Uh, because other thresher sharks have more sort of a grayish color or even some kind, sometimes brownish or bluish gray. But thresher shark, uh, big eye thresher sharks have a, a purplish sheen often on the top of their body. So what we're not going to do here on this um, pectoral fin, you draw out the pectoral fin, but where it meets the body, um, keep in mind that you want to leave, so draw the fin here first instead of the body because this part kind of overlaps a bit and then it stops. This part here uh, joins the body. That's where the, the fleshy muscle part joins. Okay, so we're going to leave that open there. And then continue with the body toward the pelvic fin. And the same thing happens with the, this pelvic fin here. Draw the pelvic fin out like that. And then there's a little bit of a notch back here, but it stops like that. And with the other one, we did that already. The, the, the shark's right pelvic fin. It comes like that, and then it goes a little bit like that. Partly, and then continues the, uh, the, the back of the body toward the tail peduncle is the second dorsal fin. It's a bit too much of a point there. It's not that too pointy. Uh, and then the tail will continue along the bottom, lower lobe of the tail like that. Uh, I'm just going to go from here. You can just draw from whatever angle you want to. You know, this is just details we're adding or, or just well, not even details, we're just kind of tracing out the parts we want to, because you've already drawn the parts that you, you know, nicely that we did before. We're just making sure. Now here, the bottom of the tail, remember I mentioned we wanted to kind of highlight where, how the tail is, is, is facing us. So the bottom edge of that tip of the tail, watch it comes this way and crosses over and joins the bottom edge of that side. So that when you look at the tail and we finish the tip, doing a very poor job of tracing over it, but that's okay. There's the subterminal tip, notch, joins it like this, so you see? And then we'll continue the upper edge of the tail, like, oops, like this. Like that. And then you can actually draw right through the base of the, the second dorsal fin here because the second dorsal fin is on the top of the shark and that top is kind of turned a little away from us because we're seeing more of the belly of the shark. So there, that body sort of overlaps the base of the, dorsal, the second dorsal fin. And same thing with the first dorsal fin. You draw it out like this. Remember there's a little bit of a lens-shaped curve there. The body of the shark, um, normally you would, you would draw sort of a, you wouldn't draw right through it like this, but here from this angle it, it, it overlaps the base of the first dorsal fin. Now for that pectoral fin, we're going to draw that first and not draw the body through it because it's on our side. It's on the belly of the shark, on the bottom edge of the shark, sort of, right? So that is not overlapped by the body line that we drew first. Like this. See, so we're leaving out that, that line that was through it there. We're going to leave that out. Like that. And <clears throat> the, and here's the thing. So remember that groove that comes from the back of the eye? We're actually going to draw that in here. We're going to keep that. And then you can like peter it out a little bit to make it maybe a dotted line as it gets thinner, gets shallower toward the back, toward the gills. And this, this shark has almost looks like almost like a humped back here. It's where the, where the body here meets that groove beginning. If I were to draw it from the side, it would look like this. And there's the mouth kind of, there's the groove goes like this and, and it really meets it quite sharply. And um, actually it happens a little behind the mouth. So I, the, mouth is, the mouth would be more actually here on this shark. I like that. Um, but that groove, it starts quite sharply there and then you know, be high. Long, like that. So that's how it would look from the side and with gills. 
So our shark here, we just need to add the gills. We already had that in pretty good detail. The little tiny notches I'm ending, adding at the end there are kind of like sharks have, their gills are not just straight lines. Different sharks have different shaped gills. If you look at them closely, you'll see sometimes they have that little bit of a, a backward turn on the ends. And it, not all sharks are the same. You have to look at them closely and check the details of the species you're looking at. It's fun to figure out what all the specific details of a shark look like. And there is some variation between individuals in some of these features as well within a species. There's a lateral line. A little bit of a crooked lateral line back there. Again, well, there's I had a question uh, for you. Yeah. Uh, from uh, someone online and they wanted to know what's your favorite shark to draw? My favorite shark? Probably a tiger. At, it's a common question I get. I, 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 can, I can see why. It's one that I have a hard time answering always because I love the diversity of sharks, the how different they are from each other, the many different shapes they have. So hard to choose a favorite one. Um, there's a few. Um, I really love thresher sharks for one because of their really neat shape. Uh, I love mako sharks. They're beautifully elegant. Um, they're hydrodynamically almost perfect. They're also the fastest sharks. They're gorgeous. The color of the short fin mako is brilliant. The blue, it's beautiful color. So I love it them for that reason. I love the six gill sharks and in general the cow sharks which are, include the six and seven gills because they're weird that way. They have one dorsal fin, they have six or seven gill slits. The, um, the frill shark among in that sort of group as well is weird because it, it's, its mouth is near the tip of its snout and has these weird three-pronged teeth and it looks so eel-like. Um, I love the goblin shark because it has this really cool um, jaw that can extend forward a long way when it snaps after fish and it's a deep sea shark. Uh, so many types, it's hard for me to pick, but those are some of my favorites. Yeah, no, that, and uh, yeah. I, I like, I like a lot of those and the ones that have the unique features. One of my right? favorite that you taught us how to draw was the hammerhead and, and oh, yes. that was those a are fun mean. one too. Um, this one's really cool because of that tail. Uh, it looked like a, some sort of eel when we were starting off and now we have a shark. Right? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Exactly. So that's, so there you go. Favorite sharks, it's a group. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I can't really get more than that. Uh, so there we go. Now we can actually, if we were to erase out the first lines we drew, or in my case, I can just, because this is digital, I can reduce the opacity. I'm just going to tone it down like this. And here we go. Now we've also got some of those other details that I drew in, but um, that is our shark. We remove the, cool. the dotted lines. And, and now we have a big eye thresher shark um, in, in full detail. So the neat thing about this is we can see it from the undersides. You can see the details of the mouth and you can still see the groove on top, the size of the eye and all those other features. And now you can draw, you know, other things. Like if you wanted to draw a fish, you could do that. You know, it's like slapping a fish or something. Or if you wanted to draw it uh, breaching, um, you can do that uh, with some, you know, water splashes around it um, to show that it's coming out of the water and, and jumping. As Ron was describing, how they can breach wonderfully with the power in their tail, um, and and you can color these in as well. And so that's the neat thing about these kinds of drawings. You can set up your own coloring sheets. Um, so there we go. That's our our that's big eye thresher shark for the week. Oh, that's that was a lot of fun. I hope everyone online had fun. Uh, one question I get asked a lot is, you know, how did you get into drawing and, uh, and how did you learn so much about sharks? That was, um, so I've been drawing since I was a kid. Uh, as early as I can remember, I think I drew my first drawing at age three and then just kind of went up from there. But um, I have also always been interested in biology. And so animals, especially and plants, and many other groups of life forms, but animals, especially sharks. Sharks are one of my favorite groups. Um, I just read a lot about them, and I really treasured the books that I got of sharks, either from the library or if I had my own. I remember the first time I found uh, a book on sharks that at the time, in the 80s, went through every single species of shark that was known. And at that time, there were only 367 known. Uh, but when I got that book, 
I remember it was like Christmas morning for me to be able to read about the different kinds. I had no idea there were that many kinds of sharks because normally you hear about only just a few. But now we know of about 555 species that are described and there are new ones described all the time. Um, and it's still accelerating every year. There's more and more discovered. So uh, who knows how many are really out there, but I just love to learn about them and going, the drawing just went together naturally. And so this is how I ultimately became a scientific illustrator. Now I do, um, I've done a stamp series of sharks for Canada. Um, I've done books on sharks. Um, uh, there's a, there's a book for kids on sharks, for example, that I illustrated with my wife. Um, and, and, and I just love working on them. Right now I'm doing a painting of prehistoric sharks as well. Oh, wow. Um, so lots of different things like that. So. Oh, that's really, really cool. Well, uh, hopefully everyone uh, was able to get a really cool shark um, drawing. I'll, I'll show you mine. And then uh, if you guys have, can you, can you uh, yeah, I guess yeah, you. There we go. Oh, wow. Right on. Excellent. <laughs> so Good job. I, I uh, did it with red and then did the uh, black over it. Um, but if any of you have sharks that you want to share, uh, maybe you or your parents can share them on the Sharks for Kids uh, Instagram or tag <laughs> us at, um, at Sharks for Kids or Shark Education uh, or maybe on our Facebook page. That would be great. Um, so wanted to thank you once again for teaching us all not only how to draw a new species of shark, but some very interesting facts about the shark. I learned some uh, new facts just from uh, hearing some of the, the things you had to say today. So thank you so much. We really My pleasure. It. And thank you for having me on the show. It's always a lot of fun uh, doing these, these shark drawing uh, episodes. And thank you for sharing the wonderful facts about the sharks that you saw personally. And Oh, I have just so much love to be able to do that as well. And I remember when you know, diving with sharks or, or snorkeling with them the first time, it was exhilarating. So I can just imagine how it is to see some of these wonderful species that you have seen in your uh, photography dives. That's wonderful. Yeah, hopefully someday I'll be able to get back there and uh, take some pictures of them. They're very hard to photograph because you can't use any strobes or light, and it's oh, very sure. deep because they're so skittish. Yeah, right. Um, oh, wow. So but Anyways, I can't wait till our next shark drawing uh, session. I'm sure we'll have one in the near future. That'd be great. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll partner up again for uh, another go. Um, Super. I'm looking forward to it. Let me take a moment. I'm going to share my, my screen. And um, I wanted to show everyone where they can find out, if they're, if they're not on social media, where you can find out about the shark um, webinars that we do and more information. So, Julius, can you see uh, the Shark uh, for Kids website? Yep. Excellent. Yes, I can. So this is the, our website at sharksforkids.com, and you can look at all the different um, titles up here, and these are our menus, so teachers can learn about curriculum and crafts, and students can find out, you know, fact sheets, coloring sheets, and then also some of the how to draw are also on here. Um, but you can go under education and we have a section called webinars and here you can see all of the upcoming events so you can see uh, we've got my journey into shark science with Jasmine Graham that's going to be a really good one and then down here you see the one we're doing today the how to draw a shark and then after we do this we've been recording it so we will put it down here with all of the recorded so you can see some of these the tiger shark the winghead shark and other ones that Julius has uh, shown us how to draw so take time and go check out some of those and then also for those of you who want you can go in here and look at the shark certificate so the more of these sessions, these webinars that you attend, you can have participation certificates. So if this is your first one, you can download this, print it out, color it, put your name on it. Uh, if you've attended five or more, there's a certificate for that. And if you're a shark expert advocate, then you get 10 or more, then that's the shark certificate. So a really good way for you to reward yourself on participating and learning something new and helping sharks. So uh, once again, um, this has been Shark Talk with Sharks for Kids, and my name is Ron Watkins, and until we see you again, uh, stay safe and be jawsome. Talk to you later. Thanks very much, Ron.
Take care. All right. Bye, Julius.